I mean, like eating ice, and it been in any other um, environments, like not so cold. Would it risk hypothermia or anything like that? Yeah, if you eat ice, you can drop your core body temperature if you eat a lot of ice. And if you're a serious ice addict, there's probably something on Google, but I mean, you could definitely probably drop your core temp eating ice, but I don't know. I mean, it's just, don't eat ice. Quit eating ice. <laughs> Next question. Out of all your survival movies, like which one was the hardest one to Peru, because uh, I was very sick in Peru, and... Um, I, I can't get into too many details about that, but doing this, even though it's a produced television show, while you're puking sucks. So that, that was the worst for me physically. How many days did it take to make this episode? It looked like three days, you know, through the time we watched, but uh, it was longer than that one. It? it was longer than that, and there's certain things I can say and certain things I can't, but it's longer than the three days to produce that show. It's, we shoot for longer than three days to get it done. Because you have to remember there's a lot of logistical stuff that you don't see, you know, for certain angles. The helicopter can't make it because there's a blizzard or something like that. So there's all these things that, you know, compromise the mission per se. Why are you always barefoot? <laughs> Just to make people ask that question. <laughs> I like to stay barefoot because that's one of the things that they did to POWs when they took their shoes when they were prisoners. And I, I like to be in contact with earth. I do wear sandals when I need to because of choya cactus or ground temperatures or certain restaurants that don't appreciate me walking. <laughs> uh, but Fry's is great. Home Depot is great. Uh, <laughs> managers have all approved me going barefoot and I will patronize them forever. I want to, you know, this is a television show, okay? So there's a lot of young, impressionable minds out here. One of the nastiest things you can do in a survival situation is eat weird stuff. TV likes that because TV doesn't like to have the truth. Okay, so I would go out there and regulate your core body temperature first with clothing and water. And in a typical three-day scenario or 72 hours where they'll find you dead or alive, a, a statistical search and rescue scenario here in Arizona, you don't really need to eat. I'll, sh I'll share you a secret. Look at this. There's plenty of stuff here to go through three days. <laughs> so what you can put in your mouth can really put the hurt on you. And I've had that happen to me. I don't want it to happen to you. The hell with TV. Okay? <laughs> Some of it tastes like a big booger. I don't, I'm not a booger eater. I never was. It's snotty, kind of slimy, kind of gross stuff that we did just because it would piss Dave off. What about rattlesnake? Rattlesnake is good. Everything tastes like chicken. It's good. How you how you feel about the voice? I think training kids of any age, of any gender, is should be mandatory. You know, so I have to respect for the scouts. Anyone who has the huevos to train in lost arts, which just a few generations ago. When I have some older folks in the audience during my lectures, they would say, hey, Cody, when I went to school, I would have to take a knife to recess when I went to school when I was a little boy. And I was like, oh, why is that? I said, we were supposed to be riddling it. Don't take your knife to school now. I'm not saying that. But you can see the mindset change of what, we're, what we've lost. For the older folks in here, they know what I'm talking about. We're losing a basic skill set, and it troubles me. You know, because as soon as that electrical grid goes down, the power turns off, yeah. you'll see what's really going on. You know, so the scouts are helping, I think, turn that around and always have by getting down and dirty hands on with some skills that matter. And 4 H. Yep. Um, what was your most favorite challenge you've ever done? 
on the show? Yeah. Uh, that, I think you might have stumped me. Well, <laughs> trying to keep up with the schedule. It was, was very challenging because we were shooting, I know that's a boring answer, but we shot from, from late December with a few breaks clear up until June and I was working in my, I mean I do this for a living, I'm not a TV guy, I'm a survival instructor, that's my profession for over 20 years, so I had to keep my courses going while filming and, and that was pretty hard on the body. I'm romantic, I know, sorry. <laughs> What was your scariest moment on camera and off camera, and are you signed up for season two? Yeah. <laughs> repelling. I, I don't like repelling. <laughs> um, I don't like the feeling of my body falling. That's unnatural. That simulates death. I don't like it. <laughs> I like this. So that was freaky for me, is to do the, the repelling in New Zealand. And there's rumors of that. Nothing's been confirmed for season two. I have signed nothing. I'm a free man at this point. Why did Dave come up with the flipping the canoe over and making it into a raft? Why did he come up with that? <laughs> 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 Is Dave paid you to come to this event? Dave's a really smart guy. He's not a guy guy. And so he had that idea. <laughs> was your last adventure more fun or scary? My last adventure was more fun because I love Brazil. I love Brazilian women. They're very good. <laughs> that was an adventure, going to the airport looking at all these beautiful women. And it's, uh, the birds, the Cayman, all that was a very pretty country. I always wanted to go there. But I was really excited because the show was over. Because at that point I was really very tired. Did a predator ever approach your camp? You talking about Dave? <laughs> No, no, the production company gets there before us in some locations and they saw a jaguar out in the bush, but we never saw one. There's some people involved in this that you don't see on camera. Okay, so we'll make a noise and we're not very attracted to jaguars when, when there's more than just the two of us, you know, so. But they did see one and I wish I could have seen it, but I did not.